Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at an upgraded version of one of my favorite keyboards. I have made it no secret that TKLs are probably my favorite layout. Though, don't get me wrong, I have fun with 40%, Alice, pretty much everything but full size. I, I, I just can't do a full size even though I do a TKL with a numpad. But I like to put my mouse in the middle something you can't do with the full size so I like the flexibility but for the most part I can grab a TKL and I can start working because I don't need to remap anything usually when I have a TKL all I'm doing is mapping macros and um, very rarely do I actually remap keys uh, because it has all the keys that I need except for a numpad if I'm doing some data input some programming uh, things like that so this is uh, my original Monsgeek M1, which um, I switch out all the time. I currently have it loaded. I believe these are the Whale PBT. I've been using these with uh, Cloud Tactile switches, and I, I've quite enjoyed it. This is a lovely keyboard. At first, I was like pink, purple, I don't know, but it's really, truly grown on me. But Monsgeek has been kind enough to send me out their new M3W. Now, I love that this has VIA, but as I said earlier, it's a TKL, and for the most part, all I'm really doing is programming some macros for some commands that I use all the time, so I don't have to type them over and over again, um, and I can get mine. Monsgeek M3W does not have VIA. It uses Aco Cloud. Now, I will say I prefer VIA and QMK when possible, but the Aco Cloud, I have seen it from when it first started, when the mod series first came out, to where it's at now. It has grown significantly, and it's, it's one of the better closed source keyboard software drivers that are out there. So, they have sent me out the M3W to take a look at, and it's the fully loaded one. So let's go ahead and get to it. And here we are, another one from Monsky. And now every keyboard they've been putting out, I, I haven't found, I mean, I know there's, I, I haven't really tested the um, MGW series. They have a 75% a with no RGB, and then they also have a 108, which is a full size. But besides those two, I think I've tested all but the Alice um, M7. No, not the. M I have the M7W. Um, I can't recall off the top of my head, but every single one I've been completely satisfied with. They're very well built. Um, the quality is 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 there, and the price. I mean, most of these are ninety nine dollars. So the bare bone of this one, I believe, is ninety nine dollars. This one is, if I'm not mistaken, one hundred twenty nine or one thirty nine. I think it's 129 for the M3 loaded and 139 for the M3W loaded. But that's a whole set of Akko switches and keycaps. So <laughs> it's a pretty good deal. So today we're taking a look at the M3W V3 Pro. That means we've got the cream blue V3 Pros in here. Um, Bonsky knows that I like my tactile switches. <laughs> So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we've got. So before we take a look at the keyboard, I always like to take a look at what's inside. Here we have a piece of tape. If you want to do the Tempest tape mod with one layer, they include that uh, with you. I think this they're one of the first. Was, no, I guess KBD fans was with the Tiger Light. They had that cool graphic tape uh, for the back. But Monsgeek does include in all of their kits in case you want to add the Tempest tape mod. They include a piece of tape. Now, I, I do like these. I just wish they maybe included like two or three because I like two or three layers. But that's just a nitpick. And here we have the manual and gives you all of the functionalities and everything you can do. We'll probably be coming back to that. Then we have the accessories box. And then here we have... A switch puller, a keycap puller, 
some extra switches, which I appreciate sincerely when manufacturers put in extra switches on pre-built keyboards. It, it says that, hey, we understand. Some things, you know, might happen. Uh, if you need a few spare switches, here you go. It's very important. We also have a little kit here that has some extra gaskets for if we want to do the force brake mod. That hole in the middle allows you to put it right where the screw hole is so that it's padding on either side. Got to be careful not to drop it, but we also have a Monsky 2.4 gigahertz receiver. I like the fact that they do put the name on there, so it's going to be much easier if you come across this dongle just somewhere to figure out what keyboard it's going to go to. And then we have the cable. These are by far my favorite OEM cables. Uh, they have the metal connectors at the end. Um, they've got a coil. They don't have a separator. I just like them. I'm a big fan of these and I keep collecting them. These are the ones that I I use the most. And whenever I'm gonna hook one up, I mean, this is what I use right here on my test bed. This is from another Monsky. These are nice cables. Now, another thing that I do appreciate with the Monsky keyboards is that they always include a dust cover. Um, whether you're in an office, you're working from home, you're working outdoors, there's always going to be dust. And I mean, I've taken keyboards that I've only used for a couple of weeks and taken the keycaps off and I'm like, where has all this gunk come from? From dust in the air to hair, cat hair, especially if you got cats or pets, you're gonna have hair underneath those keys, whether you believe it or not. That's why I, I I recommend that you take the keycaps off your keyboard every once in a while and, and run either a little vacuum cleaner or a brush on it, clean it up. But using a keyboard cover is going to help you to prevent a lot of that dust from getting in there. You won't need to be cleaning as often because when it's not being used, might as well cover it up, right? And here we are with the Mons Geek M3W. And I gotta say, it is lovely. Um, it's funny because in this lighting, I had to turn down the lights a bit because of the white background and because of the uh, the gradient keycap set. Silver tends to take on other colors, or at least it's, it's reflecting those colors, so it kind of seems like it has those colors. But we have the gold accent on the side, like we do on all the mods, Geek. And I'm, I'm still, I think somebody's already created a 3D STL file so that you can print your own blocks um, and change your colors and everything in there. It would be nice if they actually uh, had an acrylic one and had some LEDs on the side, but that's neither here nor there. Taking a look at the keyboard, we have a solid hunk of aluminum with some lovely keys and let me see, I'm gonna guess they're die sub because the way that they're going up and down. Huh. No, these are actually top double shot. Hmm. Wow. Interesting because the colors are changing as they go up. Yeah, those are definitely double shot. They're only top double shot, but let's see what kind of thickness we got here. 1.3, not bad for top only double shot. 1.3 millimeters of thickness. But yeah, looking at this keycap set, um, it is an OEM keycap set, which I'm surprised because they are south facing, so they could have just gone with cherry and there would have been no issue. But I know some people like OEM. I actually like OEM too. I prefer a sculpted OEM, like an SA or MT3, but I'm fine with OEM. These Akko, the, the new switches, practically all of them that I've tested so far, I've been very happy with, the V3s and the Pros. So we have a full-size TKL, although it's not at the same bottom row. Some people are 
they've got to have that. I don't mind. I kind of like the F13. Uh, I usually map that to delete, but I've got a delete right here, so it's no big deal. Um, some people do prefer having all four of the keys over on this side. I don't know who actually uses the menu key for instead of the right mouse button, but it's there in case anybody needs it. Obviously, um, the software will allow you to remap in case you want to, you know, make caps locks function or you know any sort of crazy stuff. It will allow you to do that. I think function is the only key that cannot be remapped, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't taken a look at the latest software, though. I'll have to do that. So we have a very solid aluminum TKL that definitely has some substance to it. I appreciate a keyboard that has some substance, especially if Zombie Day comes. If zombie Day comes, I'm going to have a weapon handy. Ain't no zombie getting past me with my handy dandy Mons Geek. As with the regular M3, it sounds lovely. Um, now, I did do the force break on the on my first M M3 that was bare bone, but there's no there's no ping whatsoever. So I don't see a need to even open this up. Now let's see. I do believe that the switch is going to be here. Yep, and there we have the switch. We can go one up. I believe is Windows mode. And then we have, yeah, that's for the 2.4, I believe, or that's wired. All right, so top is Mac on battery power. Middle is Windows, built-in power supply, and bottom is Windows on battery power. Now we have E, R, and T are the Bluetooth devices. Y is the 2.4 gigahertz dongle and U is wired mode and function and space will give you all right so right there we've got 90 percent less than 100 percent if it was all the way to zero it'd be fully charged at first when I saw keyboards putting switches underneath keys I was like mm, that's a little odd but I mean you gotta understand we've got a nice hunk of aluminum here trying to cut out a spot for a switch and then being able to take it in and out without causing any problems that makes the best sense. That makes the most sense out of all, in my opinion, because it's on the plate. It's not going to, I mean, it's on the PCB, so it's coming through the plate. So you're not gonna have any issue having to worry about the switch getting broken off. So I think it's a safe spot. And I mean, taking off a key, and switching it on and off isn't the biggest deal. Me, granted, I primarily, especially when they're chunky, I primarily use these in uh, fully wired mode. We have south facing, we have PC plate, we have plenty of foam, we have no need for a force brake mod, we have a fully loaded keyboard out of the box ready to go. It sounds lovely. Spacebar could use a little tuning. But usually when you're dealing with tactile switches and spacebars or long long keys, it can be a little bit of a is that coming from the switch or is that coming from the stabs? Now let's see we do have plate mounted stabilizers, but there is the ability to install. PCB mounted stabilizers. So if we pop these out, we can see that there's a hole there and there for screwing stabilizers now that I know of, only the Akko um, screwing stabilizers fit. Though there are a couple of others that I don't know off the top of my head that fit in there as well. Thankfully, these these are the their newer ones. They I, I want to say they're V2s, their first TPU double shot. I, I don't know, there was something funky with them. These though, they're quite 
It's almost hard to tell if you're dealing with a plate mounted stabilizer or PCB mounted stabilizer because they're attached as attached can be. They're stable, which is what we want out of a stabilizer. And let's not put it in backwards. And they work as expected. Just the specs. Today we're taking a look at the Mons Geek M3W, a three mode aluminum TKL with 2.4 Bluetooth 5 and USB-C wired. Can be purchased both as a bare bone and as a fully pre-built kit. And it is available in three colors, black, silver, and purple. It is a gasket mounted PC plate, comes with plate mounted stabilizers, but can also use PCB mounted stabilizers as long as they are low enough to fit through the plate. It is a south facing three and five pin hot swap PCB with a 6,000 milliamp hour battery, NKRO, and addressable RGB using the Monsky Cloud software. The weight of this keyboard fully loaded comes in at 2,125 grams. The chin of this keyboard sits at 22 millimeters above the typing surface, while the back sits at 34 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of seven degrees. The bare bones version of this keyboard is available for $99 while the fully pre-built with switches and keycaps is available for $129.99 from monsgeek.com. All right, since I don't have Bluetooth yet installed here, I'm gonna go ahead and use the 2.4. I'm gonna plug it in right here, unplug it here, flip this up to, oh, no, Windows was down, yeah. Windows mode, all right. There we go. Uh, it was connected. I think I disconnected it on accident. So it's basically instant. It's just pl like plugging in the um, USB cable. Um, oh, no lag. Yeah, it seems to be just fine. So. I will have to put Bluetooth in here, but I know the other ones, um, they, they've got to be using the same chipset. The Bluetooth is one of the fastest that I've seen, um, and it works great, has good distance, especially if your receiver is 5.0 or above. If you're using Bluetooth on keyboards, I highly recommend that, you know, say you're using an old laptop and it has Bluetooth 3, get a Bluetooth 5 USB dongle it's going to make your experience with keyboards over Bluetooth 5 much better. The distance is better. Um, dropouts barely ever happen, if at all. Uh, it's just something that I suggest. Just a tip from your Uncle Mark. So, uh, honestly, I was mistaken. I thought it was 139 This is 129 $130 we loaded. $99 bare bone which is nice if you want to put in your own switches and keycaps, but you've got a set of 87 switches, which is basically two packs of the Akko Blues, and they average, say, $15, so that's $30 alone. So you got $30 in switches, the keycaps are basically free. Or look at it the other way, look at the keycaps is 30 bucks or more. So you got a free set of switches. Either way, I think that the fully built version is probably the way to go because it's something that you're going to be able to just pull out of the box, put on your desk, and start working. Um, I know a lot of people, there's there's a lot of different needs for people. I mean, some people are on the go, so they need, you know, a wireless keyboard, but they want something, you know, that's going to be solid and stable. Um, while there's other people that'll want something, you know, that's that is light on the go. So there's different use cases. But I think for a lot of people, this is going to be it. I mean, even if you're not moving it around that much and you're only plugging it in at night to charge the battery, but you just prefer the clutter-free look of a de desktop without 
you know, any wires. I mean, I certainly do. <laughs> that's, that's how my desktop is. It's nice and clean. No wires in the way. Now granted, my keyboard is under my desk, so I'm cheating a little bit. <laughs> but a lot of folks just prefer it this way. And it, like I said, if you're using the Bluetooth 2.4 gigahertz dongle or USB or Bluetooth 5, I don't think you're going to have any issues as far as signal. And that even comes to gaming. I do know that the 2.4, they have the 1000 hertz polling rate, which is what most gamers are looking for. This keyboard is going to work just fine for you, whether you're at work filling in some Excel spreadsheets, coding on some Visual Studio, or you could time you're going to go home and play some No Man's Sky or Fortnite. It's going to serve you good. I have yet to find anything that I can truly complain about with Mons Geek. I mean, I, not that I look for things to complain about, but I look for things that could be an issue down the line or something that I find that could have been done better. And honestly, I mean, like I said, I think that's a good spot for the Switch. Would I like it somewhere else? Eh, perhaps, but I just don't know how they would have done it with this hunk of metal. Um, knowing how CNC is done, I think that it would have detracted from the look and perhaps even the sound of it. So, while I think that for some people that might be an issue, like I said, I think they're mostly, I mean, you're either going to use it wired, and it's just going to be wired all the time, or you're going to use it wireless. I doubt this is going to be the keyboard that you're going to be. I mean, you might bring it home on the weekends and bring it back to the office on Monday, but I doubt this is going to be one that's going to be hauled around day in and day out. So I doubt you're going to need to use that switch too many times. But for the price that Mons Geek has on their products, I believe that they're delivering. The, the, the value proposition is there. You're getting a solid, well-built keyboard. Akko and Mons Geek have delivered continuously good products. Um, the switches that Akko is putting out lately, I mean, they run roughly 30 to 35 cents a switch, and they're just good. They're moving away from all being clacky. They are, they're all still a little clacky, but they're getting a little bit more towards that thonky type of sound. Um, and their latest silent switch, the Fairy, wow, I, I was actually impressed. It's It's been a while since a switch, silent switch has impressed me as much as a, a bubble gum. Um, so at this price, it's hard to say, all right, you're, you're gonna, you know, be unhappy or you're gonna need to replace this. No, you're gonna just be able to take this out of the box, put it on your desk and you're good to go. Mons Geek delivers good products and they stand behind their products. So that's why whenever I have the opportunity to review a Mons Geek keyboard, not only, well, I mean, I get to use it, I get to play with it, and I mean, I enjoy doing that. Again, I appreciate Mons Geek sending out this keyboard in order for me to take a look at it and review it for you today. If you guys have any questions about this keyboard, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. I do my best to answer all questions as soon as possible. And if you you'd like to see me because I will be coming back to this keyboard. I'm going to open it up, see what's in there. I may just apply the force break mod because I'm just so used to it, even though I don't think it needs it. But I'll probably do a pet mod. I may do the Tempest Tape mod. I may do the IXPE foam, PE foam mod. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is ready to go out of the box, but I'd like to see what other tones I can get out of it, especially now that I've got the M3 and the M3W, I can compare them side by side if I want to do some, you know, do one mod and on the other and use the same set of switches and same keycaps so that you can actually tell the difference between the two mods side by side. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed. And again, if you got any questions, comments, suggestions, leave them down in the comments below or come on, jump on over to our budget keeps or our Discord at discord.budgetkeeps.com. I'm usually always on there. Let's start a conversation. Until the next transmission, keep calming, keep on.